uh, we were on the subject of the Varnam. We were discussing the Varnam Jatis. Varnam as a whole, as a construct is uh, indeed very unique to Bharatanatyam because uh, I do not think other styles really have such a beautiful musical format which uh, gives so much of scope for the artist to uh, really bring out Abhinaya, the pure dance, the links, um, dexterity in every aspect of pure dance as well. It is not just uh, the jatis or just dancing to the swaras. Even the linking, the aridi, the tattimata, everything has a place where you can show your um, engagement with rhythm. So, uh, today we thought we will take the Varnam Natakuranji <coughs> because um, there are many Varnams, but this I particularly like because it is a Bhakti Varnam and uh, it is addressed to Lord Shiva. So, you know, it again becomes very endearing for dancers because it gives again a lot of scope for visual interpretation. So, the first line everybody knows, Swa, it's in Tamil, it's by Papanasham Shivan, it's in uh, <coughs> the Pallavi Annu Pallavi Charanam are all dedicated to various lines talking about Shiva and the Bhakta's association with Shiva. And of course, it's in Natakuranji, Sattu Aditala. Swami Nanundan Adi Mayendra Ulagam Yellam Ari Ume Swami Nanundan Adi Mayendra Ulagam Yellam Ari Ume Tamadam Shayad Vandarul Madod Panga Budesha Nama Amrita Paname Jeevaname Yendranam Bine Nada Nama Shevadi darshanam endru kidai kyum enave yengine So the first half are this this much and then the chitta swaram comes. So after the jati engage uh, the, the jati interpretation in terms of pure nritta, the next portion where the nritta really seriously comes is in the chitta swaram. Sa nida nida ma maga maga sa nida dani sa sa maga ma dani sa ri ga ma ga ma ga sa ni ri sa ni sa ni nida da ma ga sa ri ga ma dani sa mi. So pattern is there. So, want to follow the pattern, exact same pattern can be done and you can, you know, make it simple and neat. Normally, we repeat the first line twice to give it variety. So, that again, there could be many choreography, choreographical variations in this. Uh, if we could do the first variation, where well, the first is just Chatusram which we use proper adavus to do. <clears throat> if Ammu, you could do the first one. One, two, three, four. Sa nida nida ma maga maga sa nida dani sa sa maga maga ni sa nida nida ma maga maga sa Dani Sam Samma Gamma Dani Sani Gamma Gamma Gasani Risani Sani Nida Dama Gasari Gamma Dani Sami Nanda 
ಅಗಿಮೈ ಚಂದ್ರಗಂ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅರಿಯೋ ಮೇ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ರಾಧಿಕಾ ಕೆನ್ ವಿ ಶೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಒನ್ ಟೂ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ then this ma so i thought it works well to have ma maga maga sa ni da just the the notes the weighty notes sa ni so instead of that to have a more stretched and a definitive thing and then for this a na na to have more of a lasya uh, kind of 1 2 3 sa ni da ni da ma ma ga ma ga sa ni da ma ni sa sa ma ga ma da ni sa ni da ni da ma ma ga ma ga sa ni da da ni sa sa ma ga ma da ni sa ni ga ma ga ma ga sa so how you reconstruct Now if you want to make it more complex you're free to make it more complex you start from the begin end where the the note finish finishes sa ni ga ma ga ma ga sa ni ri sa ni sa ni ni da da ma ga sa re ga ma da ni re ga ma da ni it should end like that preferably so if you can work backwards and see what works for you that also is fine but i feel the musicality is important again and the way you structure it has to be such that it doesn't interfere too much with the uh, flow of the music the second half also has lots of rhythm potential where uh, normally in the traditional mold you don't do a jati in the second half but nowadays you know because the second half is uh, the pace increases and you get scope to do a jati at a different pace and that wakes up the audience after the first half so you keep a small jati which can kind of make an impact suddenly where the pace increases and you and you do a jati so that's also interesting and then of course you move to the um the swara passages and swara passages that are very again very set patterns which the traditional gurus used which they didn't really alter very much particularly in the first swara uh, approach normally it would be always this adavu which would be used because uh, ma ga sa ni re sa ni da ni sa da ni sa re ga this would really set beautifully and then one variation they would do in terms of jatis could be ma ga sa ni re sa ni da ni sa da ni sa re ga na ta ra so that's the normal approach to the first swara so can we do the first swara 1 2 3 4 ma ga sa ni re sa ni da ni sa da ni sa re ga ma ga sa ni re sa ni da ni sa da ni sa re ga na ta ra the second half is so beautiful It talks about nataraja ನಟರಾಜ ದೇವ ಸಚಿದಾನಂದ ನಟ ರಾಮ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡಾನ್ಸರ್ ಟು ದ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ನಟರಾಜ ಆ
creates so much of energy joy the whole thing that you've read about nataraja the form the the whole mythology everything just comes alive and this musical phrase lends itself so beautifully to that so people take poses in between and they decorate the second half um, to work really well the the second again the see the first, normally the structure of the varnam is such that everybody knows that the first two swarams are normally the smaller ones one one avartanam and then it goes to two avartanams and then concludes with a four avartanam swaram so that's the structure normally for a tanavarnam uh, so you have scope in the second one to kind of explore a little more with just one avartanam so you know you repeat it twice because one avartanam you can hardly do anything so you repeat it twice and then make whatever you want to say you can very precisely say it so second um, uh, second swaram ma ma ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga ma ma ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga ma ta ra so one is a straight one and one is where you fill it in so the straight one we could do 1 2 3 4 mam uh, no this mam 1 2 3 4 <laughs> mam ma ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga mam ma ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga na da Yeah. This was not there. One, two, three, four. Mama ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga. Ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga. Mama ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga. Ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga na ta ra. so we have a little more filled because we thought the taihar tehi is a very important adavu and you know children try and avoid taihar tehi so we thought we should get taihar tehi in so that they become strong in taihar tehi so introduce this so that uh, uh, one of you can do it 1 2 3 4 Mama ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga. Ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga. Mama ga ma ga sa ni sa sa ni da ni sa re ga ga. Ma da ni sa ni da ma ga sa ni sa re ga na da ma ga ya da ma sa chi da. So you see the teha tehi. We did variations of teha tehi. We didn't do this particular variation, but uh, uh, the fact is that teha tehi can be done in so many different ways that it has so many variations that it looks very nice when you put it in any kind of a situation and it gels very beautifully with the uh, the swara. So, any questions so far? Yes. Uh, we've been doing doing so many jatis in the first half. Yes. We've done four jatis already, and we obviously punctuated that with abhinaya lyrics. When we come back to uh, the nritta part in the chitta swaram, does that nritta become a uh, little softer, and does it uh, react to the music that all we've been learning about jatis swaram and how we have to choreograph, looking at them, listening to the melody of the swaram so do you um, consciously think of deviating it from the rest of the nritta that you have been showing so far in the form of jati and when you do it again in the form of chitta swaram is there any conscious thing going on when you choreograph it see there are two ways of looking at it more than looking at this nritta differently from the jati what i used to be very concerned was 
most of the times the naika is some somebody who is waiting for the lord or pining for the lord and suddenly when you burst into a jati no i used to always wonder and ask my gurus as to the whole narrative then what is it yeah. suddenly you become talang kutak dikku tak and then you are doing this and you know so i used to always ask them as to what is this continuity in terms of uh, the entire work you know so they used to say no this comes as a relief the jati comes as a punctuation and a relief and it's quite different from the abhinaya you have to view it like that because you can't do a jati in the mood of a naika really literally you can't and then it becomes very monochromatic as well because the whole thing goes to for about half an hour to one hour so if you have to stay in that style for the entire maybe it's very heavy on the audience and on the dancer as well to stay and hold the entire uh, uh, 45 minutes of that so the idea is to break it and then come back to it so in the same way this comes after a nabinaya portion so again it's a break so it's the same thing in choreographing the swara as you would choreograph maybe the same uh, kind of rules apply uh, like the jyoti swaram or any of the other things where this has a format normally for four hour tanams or two hour tanams depending on the uh, how long the varnam is and you apply the same kind of uh, yardsticks to of course you definitely when you see the entire varnam there should be no repeat in terms of kanak or in terms of visual variations you see that what most of the other words which you use in each of these sections doesn't repeat so that visually there's enough for the audience to keep them engaged through the half an hour or 45 minutes or whatever you decide to do the varnam any other questions See, as I told you in this, for example, you just follow the swaras. There is a predominant mood of a raga. You know, so that is what you catch. You can't catch anything else. And then, you know, you leave it also for the personality of the dancer to come out in that. Everything can't be predetermined. You know, so if if you are a very extroverted person and an extroverted dancer, let it come out in this section, in this portion. but if you are a little controlled and uh, let that also come out your own personality has to also come out somewhere every time you're delineating up somebody else's poetry you're playing somebody else's character then where does your character or where is you you know your basic essential nature come out so i think it comes out in the jati it comes out in the swaras it comes out that's why each one of you do the same thing it looks different because your own physique you bring in your own experience you bring in your own en- 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 entire emotional content you bring in because i believe that dance is not very far removed from life all your experiences have to come in somewhere and they will get reflected in um, it can't be that you are a very very happy go lucky person and here you dance like a, a log of wood can't no it, it has to come somewhere So I guess that is the portion where you're left free to kind of interpret it according to your own understanding. Because supposing I have a movement like this, the kind of intensity I put in is my own. You know, it's my own take. What is the intensity? I've, there is something called technique, but there's something called your own interpretation of it for yourself. which of course under the guidance of the teacher you do initially and then of course later on you also further take it forward and make it your own even more so there are levels and processes to it as well so i guess you know that is a, for example this movement as i told you sa nidha nidha ma 
this ma ma ga ma ga so it depends on what is the level of uh, uh, intensity you want to take into it it can be done very casually also you know so it depends on the raga the mood everything how it is there is no one rule i can tell you to say this much percentage of intensity you need to put in here or this is the way you need to work it out that becomes difficult to really codify or structure you know any more questions Well, we we were always taught not to use too much of uh, suggestive things anywhere for a start. <laughs> Least of all in the pure dance, because pure dance is um, uh, something very sacred as well. You know, it's not it's not something that is just done to um, to catch somebody's attention or uh, it's also felt inner controlled um, um, you know expression. So. i feel uh, maybe also because i was taught by a dancer who used to dance in the temple and who came out from there so i think for her dance really meant as offering so i feel uh, maybe my in, uh, I, as you said it's a personal take um that it has always been first feeling yourself and then you know kind of uh, trying to externalize it so in that process there is absolutely no room for uh, i mean there is stylized way of doing things but to what extent are you going to uh, make it um, janaranjakam what you say you know how much are you going to fill it with uh, things for the audience to take back is something that you need to kind of uh, um, the same tai in a stylized way becomes like this become something else so it depends on what you want to do or even a movement like this it's a beautiful a stylized movement but it can get very overtly um, you know extra extroverted as well and it might not really again i said it's the personality of the dancer also which comes into play to some extent as to how much you want to externalize or you know kind of throw on the audience done so the natakuranji varnam has been part and parcel of our repertoire for a long time because again when you introduce a varnam you wonder how to introduce it to a young child when you're doing a first varnam you really don't want to introduce the nayaka nayaki straight away so a uh, first is to understand the format of the varnam itself you know the structure of the varnam itself is so complicated it's got so many different uh, uh, areas you know like there is the jati and then there is the abhinaya and then there is the jitta swaram and then the second half so even to understand all the elements i think this is a beautiful varnam to understand all that because firstly it's a bhakti varnam so you don't have that uh, experience that is required for approaching a bhakti shringara varnam where you need to nuance it even more so this i feel is a very beautiful introduction to the format of a varnam though it's long i would have preferred a shorter varnam for the youngsters but um, uh, not too much to choose out of because varnam as a format itself is quite big and um, you can't kind of uh, shorten it further to suit the dancer and uh, any other questions i have one question nowadays we are seeing the varnams are being shortened and to suit the slots maybe which are given in the festival so a 30 35 minute varnam and we got a slot of 15 minutes it's shortened so how what is your uh, take on 
I feel if you have 15 minutes, you can do many other pieces rather than attempt a varnam. Because it is very difficult to uh, truncate a varnam, you know, to cut a varnam. Because then either you cut on the abhinaya, mainly you cut on the abhinaya. You can't cut on the pure dance. You cut two, you make two you make two, two, you, or you do two kandigas together and then do one jati. But you can't cut on the anupadhis. You can, actually you can, but the musically then it doesn't work. You know, there is a flow before you go to the chittaswaram. So, if you do like one and three, then you are jumping. Or you do one, two and then you do the chittaswaram, then you are jumping again, you are missing the three and four. So, uh, the, the link of the swaras doesn't work. And there is an ideascape also. When you write a poem, you can't just jump lines many times. It's intended four lines means the intensity is increasing as you're going. If it's a Naika, Naika one, first she's telling the Saki. Then she's describing the surrounding and she's saying, why are you delaying? Then she says, why this indifference? And then you say, how great my Lord is, do you even know? So normally this is the way she, the, the poem goes. So, what do you leave in this? Becomes difficult to choose the lines. So, uh, because each has got its own place vis a vis the storyline. The plot is lost then, no? Now, you can't give, give up the line that is talking about the greatness of the Lord that you are mentioning. Now, you can't give up the line where it's the beauty of nature is being described. So, what can you leave? So, it becomes difficult to. Of course, the trend is to write new Varnams now or to pick up existing shlokas or other texts and to make it into a Varnam. Well, this is all happening, but I think nothing to, to compete with the traditional Varnam. If you have the luxury of doing a Varnam, I think one has to do it the full uh, way of doing the Varnam. Otherwise, for a 15 minute, you have many other possibilities which you can string together and do not necessary to call it a varnam and do it in that um, uh, you know with the same name of a varnam so we've also done a few varnams taken some nice uh, pieces on krishna and done some varnams or done from the haveli sankeet we have tried to make it into a varnam so we have worked on those kinds of things um, because many times your isht must be something and you don't have a varnam to really put in that so you want a beautiful krishna varnam and you don't for sometimes find it so we feel that uh, you pick up some verses and write so uh, that's also a possibility and uh, if you have a good musician with you you can sit with the musician and work out the so we'll attempt another varnam next class and we do a namaskar <laughs>